morning i am dr vivek singh and now in the section 4 i am talking about the investigations and criteria for the diagnosis of rheumatic fever so in the section 1 2 and 3 we talked about the etiology and at the same time we talk about the pathogenesis microbiology and in the section 3 we talk about the clinical features now in section 4 we are talking about the two important thing we are talking about two important thing and these two important thing is the the first is investigations what are the investigations and what is the diagnosis and after the diagnosis in the last part we are going to talk about the management 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 means investigation as well as treatment or we are going to talk about the treatment of the rheumatic fever now the first thing is investigation now let us summarize what happens here is the organism this organism is group a beta hemolytic streptococci this organism is involving the body this is the human body and it is involving the heart the first is let us consider the first 75% in joints in heart it is 60% in brain it is 2 to 30% and in skin less than 5% and in sub cutaneous nodules so why i am doing this to understand what are the investigation that is important for rheumatic fever now for the organism in the body in the different organs so let us see in subcutaneous nodules less than 5% is involved we are not concerned about this for the investigation we are not concerned about the skin we are not concerned about the brain we are not concerned about the joint almost all the manifestation almost all the clinical manifestation of the rheumatic fever it resolves back completely except the cardiac manifestation except the cardiac manifestation so what we can do is we can focus on some of the important investigation so what are the investigation for the heart we can go for chest x ray we can go for ecg we can go for echocardiogram we can go for chest x ray we can go for ecg and echocardiogram in chest what we are going to see features of ccf and we are going to see the pulmonary congestion in ecg we are going to see the prolongation of pr interval due to the disturbance in the electric conduction due to inflammation in the myocardium now there we are going to see the pr prolongation as well as we are going to see the heart block second degree av block and in echo in echo we are going to see about the pericardial effusion though it is it may be rare and we are going to see about valvular dysfunction and myocardial this pump sun chest x ray ecg echo for the organism for the organism we can go for we can go for two things one is the antibody test and the next is the culture culture for the organism or for the antigen test antigen test in culture throat 
swap culture but this throat swap culture is positive only in minority of the cases it is positive in minority so what is more important the antibody test in antibody there are four important the first is the aso titer the first is the aso titer now aso titer in 80% of the cases it is positive so aso titer is 80% now the next is anti hyaluronidase anti hyaluronidase anti hyaluronidase anti dna and anti streptogen test this last the anti streptogen test it is used to rule out the rheumatic fever it is used to rule out rheumatic fever it is used to rule out the rheumatic fever now these four test they give accuracy of 90 to 95% together so they give accuracy of 90 to 95% so what happens in the body what are the investigation we go for hemoglobin because there is a anemia we go for wbc count because there is a polymorpholeukocytosis there is a polymorpholeukocytosis we go for crp we go for esr there is increased esr there is positive c reactive protein increase esr decrease hemoglobin increase polymorpholeuco polymorpholy pml leukocytes there is increased leukocytes now the second thing is complement we can go for the complement we can go for globulins alpha 2 and gamma mucoproteins alpha 2 gamma globulins so these are the investigations that are important in case of the rheumatic fever we can see for the organism we are going for the culture and we are going for the antigen testing in culture minority of the cases it is positive but it may not be positive in all the cases so we go for the antibody test where there are four antibody important antibody tests and the next is the hemoglobin leukocyte count crp esr and complement and alpha 2 or gamma globulins the next is as the important structure is heart we are going for the chest x-ray ecg and echo in chest x-ray we are seeing the features of congestive cardiac failure as well as pulmonary congestion and in ecg we are going for the pr prolongation and we are going to appreciate the av block and the third is the echocardiogram where we are going to see the pericardial effusion and valvular dysfunction and myocardial dysfunction now let us see the diagnosis so for the diagnosis the diagnosis is made on the basis of zones criteria so on the basis of the zones criteria they are the major and minor criteria there is a major criteria and minor criteria so major criteria is j o n e s so what do you mean by j o n e s so joints means poly or thigh this as i told you the first figure i draw was of the joint so 75 percent there is involvement and that's the polyarthritis and the next is zon so nervous system so nervous system so in nervous system there is involvement of the brain that is the chorea chorea at the same time 
at the same time at the same time there is also carditis and e for erythema marginatum and subcutaneous nodules we have already seen all this uh, clinical features all the criteria which are mentioned here in the third section of the video so joint nervous system and in nervous system there is a chorea carditis erythema marginatum and subcutaneous nodules so what are the minor criteria the minor criteria fever why there is fever there is fever due to the inflammatory cytokines inflammatory cytokines and always remember always remember cytokines T helper 1 and TH17 these are the key mediators they are the key mediators in rheumatic heart disease and they are the key mediators in rheumatic heart disease so in minor criteria there is fever arthralgia PR prolongation raised ESR raised ESR CRP positive and previous history of rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease so these are the minor criteria these are the minor criteria as remember there is a fever arthralgia PR prolongation ESR CRP we have already discussed CRP ESR PR prolongation and CRP ESR previous and there is a, a previous history of rheumatic fever now what are the supporting evidence the supporting evidence are the supporting supporting EV denses what are the supporting evidences the supporting evidence is recent scarlet fever recent scarlet fever and the others are the ASO titer the ASO serology in serology now remember at this point at this point so for the diagnosis there is two major criteria or one major and two minor criteria if there is a two major criteria or one major and two minor criteria there is a maximum chances for the diagnosis of rheumatic fever there is a maximum chances for the diagnosis of the rheumatic fever and if there is a supporting evidence then the chances is more high for the diagnosis of the rheumatic fever so this was I was talking about the investigation and the diagnosis of the rheumatic fever at the same time I elaborate the point the key mediators in rheumatic heart disease always remember that these things then the investigation that we are going to send in case of the rheumatic fever and why you are sending the investigation and for the diagnosis you remember the major criteria minor criteria and the supporting evidence now in the next section of the video we'll be talking about the treatment part of the rheumatic fever and the prophylaxis of the rheumatic fever thank you